Hey, I'm Joe from JoeCollinsHoney.com and TestTalks.com, a blog and podcast dedicated to all things test automation related. Today, I want to share with you the top 10 reasons for flaky automated tests. Check it out. Number one, not having a framework. If you're working on any automation that has any level of complexity, you really want a framework in place so you're not repeating yourself, that you have some good reuse going on, and that you have some guiding principles in place so that, so if you had multiple teams contributing to your testing efforts, not everyone's doing their own thing and creating a lot of code that has to be maintained over time, by having a framework and having one place where things are stored, it makes your tests a lot more repeatable and maintainable. Number two, using hard-coded test data. Another common issue I've seen that causes flakiness is using hard-coded test data within your test scripts. So if you have all this test data hard-coded, so you had 2,000 scripts, and you had that one, two, three hard-coded in 2,000 scripts, whenever you went to another environment or that, that ID changed, you'd have to change it in all 2,000 places. So you really do not want to have it hard-coded within your actual test script. You want to have it out in maybe a database that runs at runtime when your tests are running or a properties file or something along those lines. Number three, using coordinates or XPath for element recognition. A small change to the coordinates will cause your test to fail. Anytime someone moves it, moves an element, that XPath is gonna change. You really wanna to try to use an element ID, unique ID or name whenever possible. Number four, using shared test environments. This is a problem because if you have someone manually mucking around with your data while your tests are running, say in your continuous integration environment, and your tests rely on a data to be in a certain state, but someone behind the scenes, unbeknownst to you, is changing that data or flicking a setting on and off, that is going to cause your test to be flaky and it's going to be very hard to troubleshoot. So you really want to have a lockdown environment for your test and avoid sharing it with everyone so that you have control over what goes in and out of your data and it just makes your test more maintainable and know when something fails, why it failed, rather than trying to have to find out that someone was actually in your environment making changes during the time your tests were running. Number five, having tests that are dependent on one another. Do you want your test to be atomic and independent as possible, especially as you start ramping up your test efforts and running your test in parallel? You need each test to be able to run against any environment on its own and not have to worry about running uh, after a certain amount of other tests run. You want them to be as independent as possible. Number six, tests not starting in a known state where it knows that it's going to be at a certain screen all the time. I've seen teams that try to get around logging in and logging out after each test scenario to save time, and it just ends up causing more issues because if a test fails in between that test run and they don't do cleanup after that, when the next scenario starts, it may be on a page that it doesn't expect because it expects it to be logged in. If you have a known state every time, it makes it much better. What I do in my framework, we log in after each test, we enter in our data, we end the test, and we do a lot of cleanup at the end, like closing all running browsers, any running instances in the background. So when the next test runs, the next scenario runs, it's in a nice, clean, known state. Number seven, tests not managing their own test data. Also, expecting your tests to have data within any environment that it runs against without setting up data on your own is going to cause your test to fail. You really do need to have some sort of test management in place in order to handle what test data your tests are going to use. A good practice is to use a is in a tear up or tear down method in your tear up or your or a before stories a before story method. You're actually uh, creating the data on the fly, and at the end you're doing a rollback back or you're cleaning up the data. Number eight, not treating automation like any other software development effort. Really, test automation is a software development effort. You need to use the same practices, the same procedures as your development teams in order to be successful with it. If you just treat it like a one and done thing, you're gonna have issues. Automation, test scripts, just like any development, any software needs to be maintained over time. You need to be constantly refactoring and changing based on how your application's changing. So you really do need to treat it just like any software development project using code reviews, version control tools, all those types of things. Number nine, failing to use proper synchronization. A lot of times I think people just assume that their application or their elements are gonna be in the right state before they interact with them. And that's a big, big problem. You wanna make sure you're using a robust synchronization method like a explicit way to say, before you click on something, is it clickable? Before you interact with an element, is it present? If you don't have that in place, there's going to be a lot of issues. So you really need to focus on having good synchronization in place as you develop your test automation scripts.
And the tenth reason for flaky automated test is badly written test. So just having junior people just creating tests because you think it's not a real development activity is going to cause you an issue because badly written tests are probably one of the main reasons for flaky tests. To download the full infograph of the top 10 reasons for flaky automated tests, just click on the link below.